What's up guys, Andrew, AKA the Glocktopus here with Glocktopus Reviews. And this week I'm bringing you a review on the Foxtrot Mike Products 11 and a quarter inch pistol upper. Uh, this is available at AIM Surplus. Super cool pistol upper that shoots when folded. If you guys wanna see more cool Foldy Boy reviews like this, go ahead and like and subscribe to my pages on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's get into this tabletop review of the Foxtrot Mike 11 and a quarter inch pistol upper that's available from AIM Surplus. Um, this pistol upper is really, really nice, guys. It comes with the Picatinny adapter um, that's on the rear here. You can use that to mount any 1913 brace that you really need or want, or you can use a stock if you SBR your lower. But what I'm going to do is disassemble this upper and let you look at the bolt and how this is put together and give you a little bit more in-depth view of this rifle. So let's get this taken apart. Um, when you're taking this apart, you're going to need a punch. I recommend using a punch and punch only. Um, these parts are under spring pressure in the back. I have tried using other tools and it just makes it a little more difficult when you're doing that. So always guys, make sure that when you're working with your weapon and taking it down or working with it in any other capacity, that it is clear and you have no ammo in the same room that you're working on the weapon on. So we're gonna check this here. We've got no ammo in this mag here, clear mag, and there is nothing in the chamber. We've got a clear chamber. So we're gonna go ahead and take this down for you guys and get this apart. All right, guys, now that we've got this upper off of the lower, um, to get this apart, you're going to need a punch set. Like I said, um, I always use my real Avid AccuPunch set. This is a cheaper set of punches, but it's super, super nice. Um, they're affordable. You can grab these over on brownells.com. Comes with an array of steel punches. It's got some polymer punches, a hammer, brass cap, polymer cap, a steel cap. So it's just some nice options that they give you in this set. Um, you take your punch and it's going to go through this rear cap here on the back of the upper. Go ahead and push that down with your punch. You're also at the same time going to slide this rear cap towards the bottom of the upper receiver. And when you're doing that, this, uh, this spring is actually going to sit down at the bottom here. I don't know if you can really see that on camera, but the pist it's a, it's kind of a piston that sits here at the end or rod that sits at the end of the spring. It's gonna be held in with this cap. Go ahead and make sure that you're holding that down in here because it will come flying out. Push that down with the opposite end of your punch guys and you can slide this cap out and let that up slowly because that is under tension. So you can put this little cap to the side. Your rod and spring set will come out as so. You can put those to the side as well. And then as this is a forward charging handle, guys, grab your forward charging handle and pull that to the rear. That is going to bring your bolt carrier group to the rear of the upper receiver. You can go ahead, put your finger in there and slide that out. And that's it, guys. That's how you disassemble this upper. Um, this forward charging handle, I have to note with you guys, there is a spring that's built onto the back of it here. So whenever you do pull that to the rear, if you are questioning whether that does return to its original position, it does. But this is non-reciprocating. So when you're firing, this is not moving at all. It is staying here in its original location. The cool thing with Foxtrot Mike, what they did include was this charging handle can be changed to fit your preferences. It takes a 332nd Allen wrench. Um, you go ahead and you stick that down the end here. 
uh, at the front of the handguard and loosen that up. You don't take this Allen, uh, I should say this little nut that's in here all the way out. Just go ahead and back that out enough. You'll feel it to where it, uh, it it's almost gonna stop itself. Like it feels like it's not gonna come out anymore. Go ahead and stop at that point. Take your charging handle and that's just gonna slide out to the side. So now guys, you have the option of running this charging handle on the left side in the upper position. You can run it in the lower position on the left side, or you can put it over here on the right side and run it in the same in the upper position or lower position. Um, there is enough clearance, as you can see here, to run this charging handle underneath like a cloud defensive uh, actuator button for the lights. So it does clear the accessories that you're mounting up here on this rail. Um, to install this back, Go ahead and get your Allen wrench again, guys. I recommend the T-handled Allen wrenches. They're a lot easier to use than the L, the regular just out of the box Allen wrenches. You're gonna go ahead and turn this here. You see the slot for that charging handle. Get it lined up with that notch that's cut in the side of the uh, handguard. And since I run mine on the left hand side in the upper position. We're gonna go ahead and get that installed for you that way. So let's turn that to where it fits in the groove and then install this charging handle in the upper position. Super easy guys. Go ahead and put some upward pressure towards the muzzle end of the upper and then take your Allen wrench and tighten down this nut here. You're gonna feel it. Uh, it's going to give you a little bit of resistance once it's tight. Once it's there, guys, don't torque it down super, super tight. Just go ahead and tighten that enough to where that's not going to back itself out. And that's it, guys. Wherever you want this charging handle installed, you can have that installed up, down, on the left or right side of the upper. Super nice option. Um, when I took this out earlier, what I did was put a little bit of white lithium grease here on the actual rod that goes back into the gas key and charges the uh, bolt carrier group. Keeps this nice and lubed, gets that to return back to its home nice and smoothly, guys. So let's get into the bolt carrier group. We've talked about the upper enough. Bolt carrier group is going to be a little bit different than the regular bolt carrier groups that you're used to in your AR-15s. So the one you see here is about half the size of, as a normal one. I've got my bootleg incorporated uh, adjustable bolt carrier here. Just a regular M16 bolt carrier. Here's the Foxtrot mic. So if you can see that on camera, it is less than half the size of a normal bolt, ca bolt carrier group. Um, the gas key is a little bit different looking, as you can see here. Just super interesting design, guys. This does come down or break down just like a normal bolt carrier. Uh, we'll get this one out of the way here. If you have your tools, go ahead and get that firing pin retainer pin out. Slide that guy out just as normal. Pull your firing pin out. And then we've got the cam pin here. We'll get that guy out and your bolt. That's it guys. Normal takedown of this bolt carrier group. Um, I did just go shoot this so it is a little bit dirty um, but we can get this put back together. Same way guys, putting your bolt back in, making sure that you're finding the correct hole. Um, as I stated in my 16 inch review, uh, Foxtrot Mike when they are milling these cam pins they are flat on one side so you really don't have to worry about putting that in wrong. And that's gonna go in there. Firing pin goes back in and then retainer pin. So super simple guys to disassemble and reassemble. It's just like I said, it's like a normal bolt carrier group and that's it. So when you've got this disassembled, you got the rear cap, you've got your BCG and then you've got your rod and spring set here. This does have two springs inside of it. You've got a smaller spring inside of a bigger spring and that does ride on the outside of this rod here that goes in the back of the upper. And that's it guys. There is no buffer on the back of this rifle. Um, this can be fired from a folding position. On mine, I decided to mount a Midwest Industries stock adapter tube. With that stock adapter tube, I'm able to run any pistol brace that I really want. So over at brownells.com or Midwest Industries, you can grab one of these. It's just a regular, looks like a buffer tube. And the only difference is 
there is no buffer, there's no inside, just a solid piece of metal. And you can slide your choice of stock or brace, whether you're running an SBR or a pistol uh, version of this weapon. And that's it. Makes it super, super comfortable, guys. This Picatinny adapter from Foxtrot Mike makes it super versatile. Um, it is reverse threaded into your mil spec lowers and held in by the buffer detent that is normally holding in the buffer to the buffer tube of the receiver. So super, super cool um, design for these guys. I'd like to say it is an MCX on a budget, but just because it, you are saying it is a budget doesn't make this a budget weapon. This thing runs really nicely, guys. It runs like a workhorse actually running suppressed. You're gonna see that in the video when we get this packed up and down to the range. But first, what I'm gonna do is show you how to reassemble this. Uh, you gotta be super careful with it and make sure that you're reassembling it and not letting the spring fly out and hit you in the face or in the finger. Super uncomfortable situation to put yourself in, guys. So when you're putting this back together, take your bolt carrier group here. That's gonna go right back in. Make sure your bolt's extended right back down into the upper receiver. Take the springs and rod that are in the back that you took out at first. That's gonna go down into the top of the back of the gas key here on the bolt carrier group kind of have to feel around for that when you're pushing this down into the back of the receiver then you're going to take this cap so at the same time while you're pushing down with your thumb on this rod you're going to slide that cap over the rod and there's the first as you can see here the first i guess uh level of this cap that's going to keep it held into the weapon the next thing i do is i go ahead and i take my punch the back fat side it's easier for me and you push that rod down into the receiver and at the same time, just with an upward push, push that cap into place and you're gonna hear that rod snap back up into this cap and you'll know that it's seated and that your, uh, your bolt carrier group has been installed correctly. Um, you can go ahead and take a tug on this forward charging handle at this point and just make sure that it is installed correctly. And you can see there, since this is a self-contained unit, this is not gonna fly out, guys. Super cool design from the guys over at Foxtrot Mike. We'll get this pot back on here. Um, I do like to shoot this version of the Foxtrot Mike bufferless rifle, or I should say pistol suppressed. Uh, that is why I have the dead air muzzle brake. This is the chemo muzzle brake. I shoot that with my JK Armament uh, HD solvent trap. This is a steel solvent trap. You're going to see this in the video. Really nice, uh, super quiet trap. Um, I did a comparison with this trap against a Form 4 can. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out on my Instagram or on my YouTube channel. But we're going to get this packed up, guys, and down to the range and let you see what this looks like shooting it folded, suppressed, and unsuppressed. Super nice little option, guys. Let's get this packed up down to the range and let you see what it looks like. All right, guys, welcome to the range. Um, I'm going to be bringing you the Foxtrot 11 and a quarter pistol. This is the new pistol upper that's available over at aimsurplus.com. Uh, super nice pistol upper, guys. Uh, right now I've got my dead air uh, silencers muzzle brake on here, super aggressive brake. I'm going to show you the difference in shooting this unsuppressed and suppressed. Um, I'm going to try not to anger other people here at the range because I do have neighbors and this is really, really loud and annoying. So let's get a couple shots unsuppressed and I'll show you how it shoots folded and unfolded and then I'll show you the same suppressed. So we've got our mag loaded in. This is the front charging handle. We're gonna get a couple shots off unsuppressed and show you what this is like. I'm gonna be running my Rise Armament 434 trigger. This is a three and a half pound trigger pull in here. Super nice crisp trigger, so it's kind of super light, I would say. So let's put some around the sound range. Um, show you how it shoots unsuppressed. guys that's unsuppressed 
And next we're going to show you how this comes folded. And on the best. A couple rounds. I'll be tilting this to use my RMR dot on the side. Again. So it runs pretty smooth. I really like that. All right, guys, now that you've seen how this Foxtrot mic, 11 and a quarter, so runs unsuppressed for my JK armament. This is my HD steel solvent trap that I converted to a compressor via Form 1 through the ATF. Uh, it's a cool route that you can do if you're looking to get a suppressor a lot faster than filing a Form 4 with the ATF. Uh, you can check these out over at jkarmament.com. Really nice option, guys. We're going to pop this on here for you guys and let you know how it shoots suppressed. As you can tell, Prior to the day, this network is very aggressive and very loud. I don't even like shooting it. Uh, I do get a lot of compression to the face. Really annoying and super, super uncomfortable. So this is what it's like to shoot this suppressed. Uh, we'll get a mag loaded up in here, guys. First, we're gonna shoot this folded so you see what that's like. Get around in there. Again, we're gonna go with the RMR. I have it a 45. Big difference, guys. So much quieter. And if you want to run it open, like a tank guys so you can see here she a little smoky runs well this JK armament trap super quiet for a form one trap. Um, all right guys welcome back from the range I'm gonna give you my solid review on this pistol upper uh, my rating is going to be a 7.5 Glocktopus arms out of 8 uh, I'll tell you why I gave it to this rating um, shooting this thing suppressed is super nice um, you don't have an extra foot of suppressor hanging off a 16 inch upper. Um, it just makes it more of an enjoyment to shoot. As far as gassiness, when I'm shooting this suppressed, I'm using this with a JK Armament HD solvent trap. This is a solvent trap that you can get from JK Armament. Apply with a Form 1 to the ATF, and when they give you approval, you can drill these baffles. Um, it's a super nice do it home, do it yourself at home option. You're not having to wait a super long time for a suppressor but I pop this on here using a dead air armament uh, chemo adapter here on the end of my JK armament trap and then I've got the dead air muzzle brake here on the front and as you saw in the video this thing is super nice to shoot suppressed it's super quiet uh, it's just as quiet uh, as a form 4 can i've posted a comparison video with a dead air sandman s that is using this setup here in this can you can check that out over in my igtv that'll show you if uh, how quiet this runs actually on this pistol um, like i was saying as far as gassiness with this pistol is not gassy at all they do supply a suppressor spring that you can get from foxtrot mike to put in this rifle if you think think it's a little gassy um, that helps with running this rifle and keeping that gas out of your face. It's a spring that you add on here, as you saw in the video when you took this apart. It's just another spring that goes on that rod that the uh, the bolt carrier rides on. Um, if you guys are looking for one of these rifles, you can snag this, or not rifle, this upper. You can snag the upper from AIM Surplus. If you're looking for any of the accessories that you've seen here today, like the Micro Rain, um, my RMR, the RMR mount from Reptilia, or the Midwest Industries QD mount, anything that 
that you've really seen here today came from brownells.com. You can check that over in my link in description or link in bio. If you click that, it'll take you to another page, either glocktopusreviews.com or my link tree. Either one, scroll down, find the Brownells link, click that, go over to their website and find what you're looking for. Um, right now, there are some Black Friday codes going on that you can put on as, as, as recent as this video. Um, I believe those codes are RFA, RFB, and RFC. That's for 11, 12, and 13% off a couple totals. I'll put that up on the screen for you guys as well. You can use those to snag some of these uh, accessories over at brownells.com. If you guys have any questions or concerns about what you've seen today in the video, go ahead and post those down in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up on Instagram and YouTube. That'll help me out with the algorithm and get my video out to more people. If you guys want to see more cool gun reviews like this, go ahead and like and subscribe to my pages on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. On Instagram and YouTube, make sure you're clicking the notification icon. That's the bell icon up in the corner. That'll get all of my newest content over to you as soon as possible. As always, guys, stay healthy, stay safe. Check you guys later.